morning and welcome to Zion Lutheran Church. Today is November 15th, 2020. We gather on this, one of the last Sundays in the season of Pentecost before we begin our Advent season, starting November 29th. We are beginning to record and will have available daily devotionals and music for our Advent and Christmas season. If you'd still like to record a lesson this week, we will be recording Tuesday afternoon and Wednesday afternoon here in the sanctuary in front of some Christmas trees. Please call the church office or text my cell phone directly if you would still like to participate. As we gather, we continue each Thursday, uh, this Thursday as well, sharing a pop-up food market, and we've been doing that since the beginning of July, every Thursday. The last few weeks, we've been also hosting not only the one in Zion, but helping and coordinating with Ellis Elementary School as well at 245. So we're very grateful for those volunteers who have helped with that. This past Friday, we also did a mobile food truck at and with First Lutheran Church, serving over 230 households and over 700 people who were benefited by that. We are scheduling one for the first full week of December. And if you'd like to volunteer, it will be December 7th at 10 a.m. to 11.30. As we gather this morning, we give God thanks and praise for the gifts that God has given to us. So let us gather now and offer a time of worship here this morning.
rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Righteous God, our merciful Master, you own the earth and all its peoples and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our psalm for today is 90. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born, from age to age you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, Turn back, O children of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday, when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning, it is green and flourishes. In the evening, it is dried up and withered. For we are consumed by your anger. We are afraid because of your wrath. Our iniquities you have set before you, and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. So teach us to number our that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Today's Gospel is from Matthew 25, the parable of the talents. For it is this of a man going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded them, made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you have handed over to me five talents. See, I have five more talents for you. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you have handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow. And gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked slave and lazy, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? 
Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. For, but from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, which fills us, guides us, empowers us, and keeps us in faith. Today I am struck by the beauty of the fall leaves, which have pretty much finished shedding from the trees all around us. Fall is one of my favorite colors, uh, seasons, with all of the beautiful colors that the leaves have. All around us, I can see the different trees and the different colors, the maples, and especially this year, our burning bush, not eaten as much by the deer, was a striking red burning color. Love to see those leaves and those colors all around us. I have just a few more small piles of leaves blown into corners that I still have to pick up. And then I think I'm done for the season. But I'm sure next spring more will have blown into the yard uh, with the winter winds and I'll pick up some more in the spring cleaning. But one of my favorite leaves, literally, are this bouquet of leaves that I have hanging in our garage. It's a bouquet of leaves from about 15 years ago when our children, when they were so young and loved to play in the leaves, gathered them up and made bouquets for their mother. I tied them up with strings and we brought them into the home when we were living in Crystal Lake. And since then, they were in our garage. We moved, yes, we moved with them and they moved with us. And a few years ago, I actually hung them from the rope in the garage where a tennis ball is suspended from so you know when to stop your vehicle. And it's where the van, Tammy's vehicle, parks. It hangs there, and I've twisted that little bouquet of leaves on that rope so Tammy can see and be reminded of such a beautiful, beautiful gift from her children. The leaves of yesteryear the leaves that they do not play in anymore as they've gotten older, of a season, of a time gone by. Leaves, they have left us, and soon winter comes. Today we read a passage about the parable of the talents. It's a parable about a lifetime of wages. A talent was about 20 years of wages. And it's a parable about that God has given us everything. Some see this as a stewardship sermon. Some say, don't be afraid to use your money and your gifts and your talents and resources for the building up of the kingdom. Don't bury your treasure. Don't be afraid. And this passage is often in November, a perfect time to talk about stewardship just before Thanksgiving and a time to remember to use your gifts and talents. That's how most of the time we view this parable. It's also a parable, perhaps, about how we view God. Two of the people viewed God by these words. And I can't help but think uh, about Bill Robertson. And I use this passage for the first time in a funeral, at Bill's funeral, because Bill had this view. Both of them came to the master and said, what you gave me. They understood, as Bill Robertson did, that everything was a gift. What you gave me, I invested. Some would say, like Stan Duncan, that this parable is about life risking, about not participating in the business world where there are shrewd business practices. And bearing it is just a way of saying, I'm refusing to participate in such a wealth producing event. But most people view this as a parable. Also about some who view God, the master, as one who is harsh and mean. The third person said, I knew you were a harsh man. 
I know you reap where you do not sow. I know that you gather where you do not scatter seeds. That God is the grim reaper. That God is the thief in the night. And therefore this fear, paralyzing, causes them to do nothing. That God is out to get you. That God is out to punish you. So as I think about this parable today, about the stewardship implications, I think more about how this passage is about leaving. It's about a season that is going to come to an end. That there is a season of change happening in the life of Jesus and the disciples. Today, this year, for me, this parable is about leaves. About the weeping that is taking place. That Jesus is about to leave. Jesus had left eternity. Jesus had left the womb. Jesus left Bethlehem for Egypt. Jesus left Beth for Egypt for Nazareth. Jesus left Nazareth for the wilderness. Jesus left the wilderness for the Sea of Galilee. He left isolation of that wilderness to journey with 12 disciples for three years. And now he is soon leaving them. Jesus is leaving. He is going to die. And Matthew tries to explain, when will Jesus return? How will this season without Jesus being really present with them look like? And how will their journey forward? Matthew 24 and 25 includes actually four passages about this leaving. It's the flood in Noah, and that no one knew when it was going to rain, but it was going to rain sometime. And are they prepared? There's the groom who's going to return, but no one knew when, and are the bridesmaids prepared? The man going on a journey, trusting the talents, but no one knows when he will return. And then the next passage about the king who will return someday, and there's going to be sheep and goats, and you don't want to be a goat. These passages give us some ideas of what the return will look like and what do we do in the meantime. Many times we think these parables are about correct behavior, that we should build a boat, get in the boat, get on board, that we should have plenty of oil, be ready, that we should invest our resources, and that we want to be sheep, not goats. These passages in the past, and even still today, often struck me with great fear that God's going to judge us. God's going to judge me that I better have oil, I better build a boat, I better invest wisely, I better be a sheep, not a goat. You see, I know no one. My blank is often empty. I often bury my treasures and I'm more like a goat than a sheep. You see, it's Matthew's perspective that usually is always about teaching the law and what is and how is Jesus the fulfillment of the law. And most of the time, I believe that all I have is a gift from God. And most of the time, I really want to get on board. And most of the time, I want to have enough oil in my lamp. And most of the time, I, I want to care for those who are outside in the cold. But more importantly, this passage and these passages are about God's promises. God's promises. That there is a presence in community even though you don't think Jesus is with us. That there's community in this nave, this boat of faith. That there is community among the bridesmaids those who are prepared, supposedly, and those who aren't. That there's community among those who serve with our gifts and talents. And that there is a presence of the Holy One when you don't even know you're doing what you should be doing. Like the sheep who said, why didn't we do this? The other promise is that God will make it right someday. That there'll be room in the boat for everybody. No one will be left offshore. There will be people who will be welcomed, least of these, that we will be surprised by. That there will be an oil enough for all people. That there is a lifetime supply of resources. 
and that all will enter the kingdom of heaven because of God's grace and mercy. The reality is, the biggest promise is that we, despite the fact that we are guilty, that Jesus, who has paid the price for us, will set us free. That there will be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more pandemic, no more racism, no more historical pain and suffering that is often denied and hidden away. The promise is that even though we don't think God is with us, that there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, that nothing shall separate us from the love of God that is ours in Christ Jesus. This is the promise, that even though it appears Jesus is left, that the Holy One is still with us, journeying with us, filling us with the Holy Spirit, calling out to us to continue to think and serve among the poor, the imprisoned, the immigrants. Use our talents to be a blessing. But that in the midst of all of the feelings and sensing and awareness that we think God is not with us, that God is still with us. God is guiding our boat. That the promises are for you, for me, and for the world to know that nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Nothing. One day, God will wipe away all the tears. There will be no more pain and no more sorrow. Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Judge, let justice roll down like waters over this world, reign over the clouds. 
courtrooms of every land and the hearts of those who guard the law and those who stand accused of crimes. Be present in cases where we long for both justice and mercy to prevail. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy companion, console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends or who struggle with their identity and place in this world. Hear us, O oh God. Holy Protector, be with all observing as we have observed Veterans Day. Guard the lives and continue to guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all those who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Heal the wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy and immortal one, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who have died. Remind us of the frailty and shortness of our own lives and inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne while you were, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to prepare now as we gather for celebration of Holy Communion. We gather knowing that God is present in the world, that the body of Christ gathers wherever two or more are gathered in the name of Christ to celebrate this meal. So I invite you, if you have a moment, to grab some bread, some wine or juice. When Jesus gathered with his friends the last time, he took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and he gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is Take My Life That I May Be.
Go in peace and love, serve the Lord.